Those who sing pray twice. It's an ancient dictum of the church. And Steve and I were at a conference um, a couple of months ago in a church in Denver, uh, decidedly Protestant in, in tone. And uh, during the conference, we were singing uh, some of these beautiful hymns. And I turned to Steve and I said, you know, isn't it a shame that we don't have a chance with most of this kind of music to, uh, to sing this? And he looked at me with a great diaconal wisdom and said, why not? And why don't we? And so he suggested after the general convention and a very long travel day that perhaps this would be a better sermon. And I wholeheartedly concur. <laughs> Can I tell you, may I ask you, when was the first time as we go through, some of you have never heard this music, some of you have, to ask when was it that you first heard this tune, these words? Some of this music I heard at a Billy Graham uh, crusade at Tampa Stadium in 1977. I was 11 years old. I was invited by my friend to go hear a really good preacher. I had no idea who Billy Graham was. I didn't know he'd started his ministry in Tampa years before that. And I'd never heard this music because I grew up in the Episcopal Church, Cradle Episcopalian. You know the rule in the Episcopal Church. The harder it is to sing, uh, the more that we like it. That's why in some churches, not in this parish, you have to pay those nine-year-old boys to sing soprano, right? Because they're the only ones that can do it. So, um, I'd never heard music like this before. Then I went to camp, and I heard it again. And I can tell you that people can write volumes of Christian theology and not come anywhere close to the heart of God that this music takes us to. There is much to reflect on. The phrase that will catch you, the memory that you will have, the question about Jesus that will come up. This is good Christian theology embedded in songs. May I tell you that this music was sung in farms, ports, docks, military camps, prisons, and schools. Before there were books that were distributed in churches, people knew this music. Can I tell you that this music has carried soldiers into war after VE and VJ Day, during the Great Depression, after Pearl Harbor, so much of our history is caught up in this music. I wholeheartedly recommend it. Is it a bit Protestant in tone? Yes, it is. But after all, the Episcopal Church carries, does it not, both Catholic and Protestant to bring those two branches of the church together in the most beautiful ground to meet upon. If you're Catholic, don't worry, we will have communion. That's our altar call. And everyone's invited. Uh, but in lieu of a sermon, we wanted to give you something better. So sit back and take a deep breath with me, would you? Turn those song sheets to page number three. As I preached earlier in the year, this is not an insurance company. This is Blessed Ushers. I'm going to ask Steve to come, since he got me into this too, and come stand and just, uh, you can remain seated and just take a deep breath and join me. And if you don't know the tune, in about 20 seconds, you will.
next song together. When I was a very young man, I'd visit my grandparents in Panama City, Florida, up in the Panhandle. And my grandfather was quite a night owl, uh, and I, I understand that now. He was up late uh, into the early morning, and he'd leave the TV on. And this is in the uh, early to mid-1970s. And uh, you can imagine what was on late night television on the one channel that was playing. And uh, one night, I snuck, as I often did, out of my bedroom at their house to go sit with my grandfather. Uh, and uh, Jim Neighbors, who I only thought was an actor, actually, I thought he was a Marine, uh, <laughs> was uh, uh, walking by this uh, beautiful uh, river. And he was singing a song I'd never heard before in my life. And he walked into this beautifully appointed uh, a wooded area with flowers and trees, and he was singing this song. And so um, I started singing with him. I didn't even know the words. Uh, uh, I was sitting with my grandfather, 12 years old, I heard this song, and I have sung it many times since when I need the comfort to know that I can be with Jesus. Would you join me on page four, and let's sing In the Garden.
prepare in this whole morning. I have a confession to make. Your rector does not read music. My mother was a professional singer and an actress, and so we had music in our house from the time I was uh, an infant. So if I hear it, I can sing it, but I cannot read music formally. This song was played at the funeral of Audrey Hugenvik, the mother of our own pastor, Mark Hugenvik. Uh, it was a beautiful song. It was sung by 200 people in a choir in Arizona, and the whole Hugenvik family, and Steve and I had the privilege of representing you there at that service. Uh, Audrey had two requests that her family be involved in the service. Mark preached the sermon for his mother. And that they sing this song. This is Audrey's favorite Christian song. She is a New York girl, a Manhattan urbanite, who grew up singing about Jesus. I was so moved by this song and watching his family, I never listened to the verses. And I just sang the chorus. So if anybody can read music and has any voice at all, I invite you to really help the rector out right now. I'm going to ask Jan to do two things on this song. One is to play the chorus at the bottom first, with a little intro, so we can sing the chorus first. And then we're going to sing two verses, and I'm going to ask Jan to give us just a space between the end of the verse and the beginning of the chorus. Okay? So we're on page number six. Uh, make a joyful noise. Does anybody know this song, by the way? Yes. Okay. Then belt it out and help us out, would you? Okay, okay. Belt it out and help us out. Jan, a short intro. We'll do the chorus in two verses.
Is, does anybody besides these three people sitting right over here know Bless Be the Tide of Lives? Oh my goodness, we've got several of them. Traditionally, the Baptist churches that Karen and I were part of, this was the post communion hymn. Uh, and, we, and we stood and held hands together. And we, many times we were running out of time, I would always do so. We only sang one verse. But I'd like to suggest that we sing uh, one and three. This.